Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. In the second installment, uh, we will discuss how to uh, create a custom theater. So this is a quick guide. It by no means uh, go through the whole FSX at War section. I've, I've written a document and it's in there. It should be uh, provided with the uh, the FSX at War uh, for you to get into details. I will have more video to cover in details. But this one here is intended to be a quick guide to get you on your way to create a quick campaign. And that's what we're going to attempt to do today. So the objective is to learn how to create a custom FSX at War mini campaign without the use of ADE. The more complex uh, items are created using ADE and that will be covered with other videos. So you can create a campaign even if you don't know how to use ADE. So why do we care? So we have the ability to create very specific strike and training scenarios. So for those of you who run squadrons and you want to sharpen people's skills, this is a perfect tool for you. So if you use FSX at war, which has very measured uh, destruction, uh, with th which makes it realistic, and you also include some CCP uh, items in there, it really immerses people into the environment. Your imagination is the limit. And where would you use it? Obviously with mission planning and training. And you can also use it uh, to create specific scenarios that you want to train with your squadron. Let's say that, uh, for example, you want to train your squadron using uh, AMG-65 on, on moving tanks or, or to destroy specific soft targets or what have you. So let's uh, continue. And overview. So what we'll do today, we'll create a, a campaign, a quick campaign that has a two human versus one kind of scenario. And you're going to have a blue camp which will be flown by two people in our scenario. And, and one human will fly the red camp. And what will happen is the blue camp will be in Montenegro and the red camp will be in Bosnia. Now the two players in the blue camp will take off from Tivat Airport in Montenegro. Their objective is to destroy a factory near Mostar in Bosnia. Now the single player himself will be protecting this uh, factory site near Mostar in Bosnia. And he will also be assisted with an SA-2 SAM that will be live. Now the, uh, the single player, the red camp, will be flying a CAP, an air, a cover air patrol, to uh, protect the uh, the factory, and we'll create the, the flights for those. So what is needed? The right camp will need a factory with buildings and vehicles, and an SA-2 SAM site to protect it. So we will create that, and I'll show you how. And coordinates are needed to set the factory and the SAM using uh, Google Earth or FSX with Orbex uh, Bob. If you don't know what Orbix Bob is, it's basically a free add-on for FSX that allows you to uh, have a first-person first view of scenery, and therefore it will help us place our objects live. And also it creates some flight plans for the strike mission and the cap mission that people can use. So let's jump in and let's get started. Let the fun begin. We are going to create a pack and also add a reference to it. So in the upper left hand corner here you have three different buttons. We want to go into the tech tactical reference editor. Woo, we're getting into the technical stuff now. And you'll see it's not that difficult once you get used to it. So now you see that I have some packs here. What I want to do is I want to create a pack. So I'll go and click on create and I will give it a name. Now Unless there's only certain places where you can use spaces, so avoid using spaces. So I'm going to call mine quick underscore guide. And I'll point out to you where you can use spaces. So quick underscore guide, and you'll notice that it will save the file, the pack file, the pack name, in my documents, FSX at war, and packs by default. So I hit save, and now my pack is saved. I now have a pack and the pack itself is a container and it's a container that, that will keep all the objects 
that we create. Uh, it will keep all the configurations that we create. It will keep all the references that, that we use from other pack and I'll explain what I mean by that. So now here let me open this up and you will see here inside the pack there's all kinds of different ca uh, categories of items. A lot of those items are advanced uh, things that we will not actually uh, go through for this tutorial. This tutorial I'm going to keep it very simple and we're going to play around the generic and uh, real platform. We're going to play around theaters and uh, and that's going to be about the extent of this, but you'll see how you can quickly get very technical with this thing. So now let's go to the properties. And now what I want to do is I want to give it a name here. Now in this case here, when you see a name field, you can give it a name with a space. So I would call it quick, quick God. So notice how it says name, just name, then you can use spaces. Now, in order to be able to use some of the items that come with FSX at War, I have to have a reference to the FSX at War pack itself because it contains all my weapons, all the different pieces of equipment that I can lay on the in, in FSX at War. So it's important to have that pack as a reference. So I will add the pack as a reference, and I just needed to click on Add a Reference. I click on the three dots here. But before I do this, notice here there's a red exclamation. Every time you see a red exclamation, it indicates what's what it's needing, what's missing. And see it's also at the top here. There's no there's no reference. There's no pack reference here. That's why it gives us an error. So let's go reference a pack. And I will select FSX at War Pack 1. Now I could have selected the Cuba pack if I had uh, some stuff I needed from the Cuba pack. And then every time I install this pack, it would need a Cuba pack in order to work. So I'm going to select the FSX at War pack, and now I have a reference to it. If the FSX at War pack was a different version, I could copy the, the, the version here. And that is about it for setting the reference to the pack. Now later on when we're done creating all, the, all our things, we will come here and create a pack setup, which is basically creating a pack that you can share with your friends or other members in your squadron so they can install it and see the same thing you're seeing and you can participate together in those missions. So now that's it for setting up the reference. Let's go back to where we were and now we will proceed with the next steps. We need to set up a location where we're going to set up our factory and our vehicle and our SAM. And the way we can do this is there's two methods or rather three methods. So we need to either find a tool like uh, Google Earth and get coordinates or we can use the FSX award tool here and I'll show you how. Uh, let's say for example that we go into tactical engagement and we said we want it to be in most, in most star. Now if you look at the bottom left you'll see that we have latitude and longitude so you can actually uh, actually ha go somewhere on a map and get those coordinates. So for example if I want to go most star I could go here and find uh, find Bosnia. There we go. And there's Mostar. So I go and focus on Mostar. And I can decide where I want to have my factory. And let's say I could have my factory here. So if I decide to have my factory here, all I have to do is look at the bottom and copy the coordinates down. And I will be able to, to tell, uh, I'll be able to use those coordinates reason why I'm using the tools because that's what the tool is using this format of GPS coordinates. Now you could copy those and then you'll be able to use them directly into FSX at war. If you use Google Earth and it gives you a different format you'll need to search on the web and convert the, that format to something else and I do have a video on how to deal with GPS coordinates. So, so that's one method. Another method to get the coordinates is to use FSX and use the slew mode and uh, if you press shift Z while in the slew mode, so let me go into slew mode okay and uh, you'll notice here shift Z this is likely the format that you will see where your your latitude longitude is going to be in, a, in degree and minutes decimals so this is not the format that you need but you can actually if you're, a, if you're able to change your your fsx.cfg, you can actually go and find the slew text info 
and it will say latitude and longitude and at the end just add dot dec and what we will do is we'll change it to the decimal format on latitude and longitude so when you do this and you go to the slew text that you've changed you'll see that you now have the right uh, coordinate format that you need to set it up so what we need to do is uh, we'll use this uh, slew mode and these uh, coordinates here and all I have to do now is just uh, basically go up and and figure out where I want to put my my actual uh, uh, factory and my SAM so I will go and go west of here and let's pick, pick somewhere somewhere picturesque here we'll go over those mountains here and let, let us uh, sit it down here somewhere right in this valley here there we go let's pick here for example so we we just simply sit down here and get the coordinates that we need now all we have to do is write those coordinates and put it down in here near this road there we go now we do have coordinates that we can I will take off here the uh, we do have coordinates that we can copy and use for if a sex at war so all I have to do is actually write down those numbers and I am golden and then I can use those numbers to put into my FSX at war. I just finished adding the objects and as you can see I have all, all the objects placed and before I look at it, we look at it, I want to point out something. One thing you want to make sure is when you change a value in uh, this field for example or, or any field you want to click into another field to make sure that it does commit because sometimes it may take you by surprise while you you'll enter a value and go into something else and the value just won't take so just make sure you go into a different field and click in and then the value is committed another thing I want to point out so we added this one here this category which means it can be a random building and whatnot one thing I want to show you is that you can any object can be removed by right clicking and selecting remove object from generic equipment or another thing that's very useful so if you don't like it, you can actually replace it. So if you look here, I got my scenery. This corner building here is the green building here. So let me say, let's say that I want to change it. So I'm going to go here and I'll change the building to something consistent. I'm going to call it, uh, let's pick something totally different so we can see the, the difference. Let's pick some boxes. There we go. Some boxes. Boom. You see a pile of boxes here. Now that's a uh, that's where we replaced what we had for a building, a bunch of boxes. And obviously the the importance would be changed. So I would change the important the weight to uh, one, for example. Now at this point, as you can see, we have all our scenery done, and we have our generic scenery done for us. And we, since we selected to push the to to make it, uh, uh, we told it to be a real scenery. So this here, when we fly to this coordinate, it will actually show up, and we'll look at that a little bit more. Now for the fun part, I went ahead and moved us near road, and you'll see why in a moment. We're gonna start putting objects on this scenery directly into FSX. In order to do that, we need to create what is called generic platform. Now generic platform is a very important concept and you'll see here there's a button we'll go ahead and click on it but basically the way it works is you have generic platform and real platform. Generic platform are supposed to be platform that I, I create for example I create one platform that would be a factory and I get it to the way I like it as a generic platform and then using a tool like ADE I can take that platform I created and copy it anywhere as I want in the world as many times as I want so it becomes like a template so that's a generic platform with some customization to it now we also have the ability to create a generic platform without using any scenery just use the existing scenery that's in FSX like for example what we have here and then tell it that 
we don't want to put a copy of our generic platform. We just want it to be a real platform. And we'll accomplish that by clicking a couple of boxes. So let's start by creating our generic platform. And now I click on the Add Generic Platform. So just so we're clear where I went here, I went into my pack, the Quick Guide. I went into the Generic Platform. And I clicked on Add Generic Platform. Now you will be given some fields here and you'll see it gives you a gray square. It doesn't know what it is yet. The plane, this is where our Bob is location wise. This is where we're located in uh, Bosnia. So here I will give it, uh, you'll see that there's a saying no scenery found and whatnot. So this here is not going to be a, it's not going to be one of those that we create a template and we're going to copy everywhere we, uh, we like. It's, we're just going to use this scenery. So we'll make it become a real scenery. In order to do that, I uncheck this here, which is, is above scenery. And we're telling it, it is a real platform. So it will be just as it is. We're creating it as a generic platform, but it will become a scenery. So now I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it My Factory. Okay, I will tell it also here the ID type. And... I'm going to have to correct something here. ID type. And uh, here all I have to do is press the three ellipse and select the type that it is. It is a factory. Now, in this case here, I'm not pulling from a file name, but it's a good habit to get into not to have any spaces. The only place you can have spaces is when you have a field called name like this. If it says anything else than name, like file name, don't put spaces. This way you won't run into trouble or having an issue. Another uh, generic rule is that you don't want to have a, an airport code unless it is an actually an airport. So leave that blank unless it's an airport. And we'll create a couple of airports to create our flight plans later. And here, when I created the type, it says, OK, it's a factory of the type FSXL Warpack 1. And that means that we can go create objects from that. Now we want to put it where we are here. So what I'm going to do is put the coordinates that I have where I have uh, my Bob set up. And I have copied those coordinates just to save a little bit of time. So there's the lat. And I will copy the long. And the heading is not important. And long, there we go. And I click off of it. And notice how my block actually moved. Now my factory icon is gray because it's not assigned yet but you'll notice that it's near it's near a city here okay so there's uh, where Bob is that's my airplane that's me right here and this is where the factory is actually located based on the coordinates that I put in there so now I'm gonna call this by the name here that'd be La Hole La Hole I think I'm not sure how to pronounce it <laughs> factory or I could say uh, armament factory now you're gonna see like we said we don't have any uh, it's not an airport therefore we're not gonna put an ICAO code like a, like a KNTU or airport code now once we have that the next thing to do is to actually uh, click on generic platform equipment and that allows us to add things to this now I will add a couple of objects just to show you how it works and then after that uh, we will actually uh, do it manually uh, I'll, I'll go do a whole bunch so let's see here I'll, I'll put two so first let's go ahead and right click and we can select to add a generic platform equipment here now you have a yellow, you have a yellow uh, question mark. Now that could be any piece of equipment at all. So now I will maximize so we can see. So in this case here, we're going to pick. Obviously, we we're, we're going to have a factory. So let's go pick a factory. So the first thing to do is to click on the equipment category here, and you're going to see you have some equipment in green. So if you pick a piece of equipment in green, it will put one of the group, uh, the green ones are groups of that object. 
If you look at the equipment below, yellow, those are single objects. So you can put a, a pick a green, it will randomly pick a building, uh, a factory. So if I look here, so you have different size. So I'm going to say a, uh, a medium sized factory, for example. So that means that my factory, whatever is part of that factory uh, category, could be appearing randomly. So now I'm going to call it the armament factory. Now let's look at some of the fields here. Group, do not concern yourself with group yet. That, that has to, that's explained in the book, in the, uh, the actual documentation if you want to look at it. Heading, we will change the heading in a moment. Now occurrence, occurrence is determines if it's going to, is it going to be shown when uh, we create our theater, when you load your theater. Here I'm saying 100% of the time when I load this campaign, it will be shown. If I had 50% here, if I had a 50, there would be 50% chance that it would show up when I load, when I create a, uh, when I create a campaign. So this here is just to add some randomization. So if you want it to be there all the time, pick 100. If you want it to be there 75% uh, of the time, then make it 75, and so on and so forth. Now, that's just one of them. The weight. Now, the weight itself determines uh, how important it is. So, I recommend you use 100 for the most important and 1 for the least important. So, just gauge it, and uh, down the road, as the FSX Award develops, it will actually be important because it will determine when is totally destroyed based on the value and so on and so forth. So in this case here, this is uh, important to us, so we'll put 100. So now we have all the field that we need, and we can go ahead and manipulate this armament factory and place it where we want to. So now we'll show you here. Now in here, you notice that I've zoomed in. All I did is I used my mouse, my mouse wheel and zoom in. Now, a couple of things I want to show you. I'm going to locate the uh, the building first, and I know I don't know where it's at here. So let me bring it near. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll use the shift key and the left click, and I can move the building. I'll move it right over Bob here, so I should be seeing it. Oh, I think I saw it move. There we go. So that building is. Uh, we're right inside the building. <laughs> So now what I will do is I will actually change the view and we'll view from uh, from the top here, outside from the top down. And it looks like I destroyed my target because I'm rubbing it in the, into the ground here. Anyways, so you see how I can move it from left to right. And let me just uh, go back to my bar view here. Yeah, it looks like I crashed Bob. <laughs> So now you can see here, I can uh, left click, uh, left and shift, and I can move it ho however I want. Now if I want to rotate it, you see the little, there's a little handle. You put your mouse over the little handle, hold the shift and the left, and you can rotate that factory and put it wherever you want as well, at whatever angle. So now, I'm gonna, just going to place it exactly where I want along the side of the road. Now I'm going to do another one just so that you get the idea uh, how it all works. And I could have uh, view also from Bob, I just crashed Bob. So top view uh, works really well. So let us add another, another component. Now I'm going to zoom in, and you'll notice at the bottom left-hand corner, the zoom, the zoom level tells you here the maximum you can go is 20. So you can uh, get very granular where you put it. So I've put my factory here, and I'm going to add another piece of equipment uh, right next to it here. And this one here, let's see what we're going to decide here. I uh, believe we're going to make it a, uh, let's see here, a medium military building. And now we're going to go and uh, put it, uh, put it here and call it, uh, officers, building okay and once again you want to put the importance that you want so I'm going to make that 75 percent 
Now let's go and take a look. You see this uh, building here? It looks like a military building. And it looks like I put it right on top. So I should, uh, basically left click to hold and move it around the way I want. Now shift and move it where I want. So there we go. So now I'm moving the building where I want. Okay. And I'm going to zoom in here. So it's not an exact science here. It's not a so I rotate the building and maybe I put it across the street. So now I'm going to put more items together and I will show you the, the finished product when we'll have our actual factory. So now I might change a few buildings just to make it more uh, more realistic but I just wanted to show you how you can manipulate buildings and and do different things with them. And once again, when you once you click here and you add for generic equipment and you go into the category, you have absolutely access to everything that's in FSX Pack 1, FSX at War Pack 1. And if you created your own pack and your own objects, so if you're, mod if you're good at doing uh, models, uh, you can create your own models and then you can pick them and then add them into the scenery. So I'm going to go and uh, add more equipment and get it all set up and then we'll come back at the end take a look at it and then uh, we'll go from there okay we will now add a SAM site and add two airports now the SAM site is meant to protect this factory so we probably want to get it on the hill possibly uh, we can look around and see but I think I want to get in a tall hill so I'll go up and see find a spot where It'd be good to put down, and I found a great spot here. Where we could put it down right here in this little patch of land here. Now the steps are exactly the same as we did before. We're going to add a generic platform, but this time we're going to pick an SA2 type of platform, and that will tell uh, FSX at War to put a tack pack. Uh, SAM site. So let's go ahead and call it. Uh, it's, we're we're going to do like before. It's going to be a real platform. We'll remove the uh, is above FSX scenery because we don't have a file name to go and select. And here we're going to call it uh, SAM site. And here we're going to call it, uh, since it's close to Kus Kusky Grad, let's call it Kusky SAM. Okay, the type ID is going to be our SAM site. So let's go get the SAM site SA2 SAM site as a type. It's FS accept war. And there's no ICAO code. The coordinates are simply using the coordinates that are, we have in FSX in our slew mode. Now let's, let, I'll put those down. Now, importantly, if you wanted to add uh, objects after that you could nothing stopping you we're not going to we're just going to put a sample you could add a lot of other items to your liking the same holds true for the airport but we just choose to just put simply put a SAM and that's it okay so we have that part done now the next thing we want to do is add the two airport so the same process again we're going to add an airport and this one here is going to be most our airport. So let's uh, uncheck that and check this. Most our airport. Okay. Most our airbase. There we go. And we're going to select here the type is uh, airbase. And the ICAO code is where we want to have that. So in this case here, the ICAO. AO code is going to be LQMO, which is what it is in FSX. I got those ahead of time, so you would look them up and make sure you have them. And here, th what you do is you actually go into FSX, put yourself on the base that you're trying to mark in, and then simply use the coordinates that you have. So in this case here, I will s go and uh, go to airport, I'll start. And once I'm there, I can uh, put the coordinates in. 
that's important to uh, to understand that you can add objects you're not limited here now I have a coordinates so I will start entering my coordinates and once I'm done entering the coordinates I will do the same repeat the same process and add the other base okay so now I have my base added next I'm gonna add my I'm gonna add my TVAT airbase so same process again so I'll add generic platform same thing here TVAT airport and TVAT airbase I will select the the TVAT uh, the airbase type the ICAO code is going to be LYTV and now I need to go into the location here and go to the airport by the name of Tivat which is right here and once I am there I can grab the coordinates from that so I'll so I'll go ahead and grab the coordinates. So after we've done all this, you will see, and I will show you, I'll zoom out here ahead of that. And you'll see here that uh, I have an airbase already here. And I have uh, my factory here. I'm gonna add the coordinates, and we'll have another, another gray icon. And the reason why the icons are gray is because we have not yet assigned anything to them. And we will do that in the next part of our video, which is basically starting to create the theater. There we go. So now I now have the airbase created. So you can see I have the airbase here, the TVAT airbase. Here I have the other airbase, which is the most our airbase. And here is the, this factory. So the red team is going to take off from here and do some protection here and the blue team is going to take off from here and try to go attack this uh, this base, this uh, factory. So now that we have that let's go ahead and uh, we will go to the next step. And once again just a reminder you could populate this base here with buildings and whatever you want but uh, this uh, we're just trying to show you what you can do with it the next step is to create our theater so I will go ahead and click on theater and here we're gonna add a theater now the theater we need to give it a name so I'm gonna ca call it quick guide because that's what we're actually creating now it wants me to add belligerent uh, so belligerent are basically teams so for example the blue team uh, will be Montenegro and the red team will be Bosnia so let's add one belligerent right and we said blue team so we'll call it blue and we'll call it Montenegro okay and we can add our other belligerent now it will be red uh, crimson no, red and we'll call it Bosnia okay here what we'll do is we have our two teams now right and then we'll add an inventory the inventory is basically I want to make sure that it can see all the common objects and I can add these here but the uh, common objects is all we're going to need for what we are doing but uh, we, you would add uh, the these here items in your categories in your inventories to make sure that you can see them so for now we're just going to add a common object because that's all we required and the same thing for Bosnia I will add an inventory and it will be common objects and their objects from FSX and Warpack 1. 
Now you could add more categories, it will not hurt. If you were using some stuff that are in those categories, like NATO planes, objects, and that kind of stuff, then you would add those inventory. But for now, all we need is the common ones. So now here, we've actually created our two teams. We've got the red team and the blue team. The blue team is two, and the red team is one. So in fact, uh, let's call it uh, two human versus one. And we'll call it uh, one red. This we will know the blue is two humans and red is one team. So this way when you load the, the actual campaign, that's what it will be called. Okay, so I have that. Now the next step is to go into the map. And remember we had these items here that we created. Okay, well now what you're seeing is you're seeing all the objects from FSX at war all the different platforms. You could use those if you wanted to in your own campaign. But for what we're doing, we're going to go back to where we were and use just ours because that's what we set up to do. So now we said that the blue team would actually take off from the TVAT Air Base. So I'll highlight Montenegro and I will say that the, the blue team here I will add the selected, I right click here, I don't know if you see that, I, I get the base here, I right click and add the selected belligerent. So I have blue team selected, so this icon becomes blue. Okay, and uh, fret not, we will do the same thing with the other ones, but this time we're going to use a different belligerent. So we'll use a different team. So terminology takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you're used to it, it uh, becomes second nature. So Bosnia Team Red, go to my factory, right click, add to selected team or belligerent. Same thing for the same site, add to selected team, the belligerent of Bosnia. And then uh, zoom out, go to Mostar, add selected team. So since I have Bosnia as a team, they have these three. And now if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that I have these three here, okay, and now if I, now that I'm done with this here, I can quit out of that, quit out of that. Now if I go to my quick guide again, theaters, see how I have two versus one, and I have my map. So I don't know if you noticed, but I, by going out and going back in, it just kind of reset, and then it gives me what I have. So I now have a theater created. Pretty cool. Now if I'm in, uh, if I go back into, uh, if I go all the way back and save, say yes to save the, the work that I've done. If I go in tactical engagement, as I've showed you before, if I go create campaign, and look now, I have quick quick guide pack that we just created. I go next. Look at that. We do have a quick guide two human versus one that we can use to fly with. So we're not done yet. Uh, we have uh, we have this. Uh, we got a little bit more work to do. So I want to show you how that works. Okay, one little piece of additional information. You may you may have wondered which team the SAM site that we created is going to be. Now, because if you're flying red team and you fly near the uh, the actual scenery that we created, you'd get shot down if you're not on the same team. Well, the way it's set up is that whatever team order is created is the team number it's going to be in tag pack when you lay out a SAM. What I mean by this is that Team Blue, Montenegro, is Team 1, and Team Red, uh, Bosnia, is Team 2. So any SAMs that, are, that we create with team, the, with the red team will be assigned Team 2. Any SAM that we create with Team Blue, which is Team 1, will be part of Team 1. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so our SAM in our scenario here will be assigned Team 2. Okay, the next thing we want to do, now we have our theater ready to go. Uh, I've showed you in the previous videos how to create a uh, flight plan so you can create your uh, cover air patrol flight plan you can cover your, you can create your strike flight plan 
but now I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to share the pack that you created and it's quite simply you go to your pack so let's go to tactical reference editor that's where we keep our pack and we go into our pack and other properties now I don't know if you remember at the beginning of this video I mentioned that there was a a button to create a pack so here you click on set, uh, create a pack setup and it says welcome to the pack setup creation wizard so when you go next it checks to make sure that you have you know set up set up correctly if you don't have it set up correctly it will not work now when you go to you know set up you need to download from that from that site and install the correct package the package that you want the right now the latest version is uh, 559 so you go to 559 and the version that you want to have is this one right here you know set up and whatever the latest version is dash unicode.exe that's the one you want to run once you run that then you should be able to meet the requirements that are into the setup here and this you know setup those three once you have these three grayed up boxes it will let you go through but until then it won't so remember to pick the right version the right unicode version so you'll see here there is a you know setup unicode that's the one you want there's another unicode down here but it has a qsp or what have you not the right one this is the one you want right here okay and pick a site that's near near you so it's unicode setup and it's uh, the description is unicode inno setup self installing package so hope this is clear now once you have that you go next and it, it will do some checking on your pack that there's no errors it will not create a share pack if there's errors and it will save the pack and you see all kinds of stuff happening it asks you uh, co completion successful the pack can be found in here so you can copy the path to take you where you where you need to go so I'll click finish and now I'm gonna go into that path now if I go in here you will see that I have a uh, two a quick guide here and a restore quick guide these are the files that are generated for our pack now there's two different functions here the restore quick guide is one that will allow you to share uh, allow you to share your pack and it allow people that you share with to make changes to your pack and it can create another package share with everybody else if they want so that one here if you uh, collaborate with somebody else that's a good option and then uh, once you have what you want you share only the setup quick guide the setup pack the setup itself without the restore word in it uh, is a read-only one it will not allow to uh, allow people to make changes so you get these two the one that you want to share is the setup one the one that you don't uh, don't want to share unless you collaborate with someone is the restore one so that's your it restores everything the way it was now you notice that uh, there's a folders that are created well if you if your pack if you have some uh, more complex scenery we didn't with this one here but if you have more complex scenery where you create scenery using the uh, FSX uh, the uh, airport designer editor then it will you probably have to uh, tell your end user after they install the pack to go in their add-on scenery and add your pack folder so in this case here we only used uh, we only used existing scenery in FSX don't therefore it's not required so I hope that's uh, that makes sense uh, so this is it for the creating of uh, your own mini theater and campaign uh, there is uh, there's a lot to uh, to this uh, uh, program to learn and this here is just scratching the surface so I'll try to keep it very simple for you and hopefully uh, you enjoyed this guide 
Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to us in the forum. We'd be happy to help you out. If you like this video, click on subscribe. Uh, it's been fun. Take care. Blue over and out.